Hi, I'm Mark Knight and I am speaking with Skittle. Right, Mark, first things first, I need yes. to speak about a big, big anniversary that's coming up. 15 years of Tall Room Records. I thought you were talking about my birthday then. When's your birthday? Well, June, I thought you were going to go into oh, that. Yeah, well, we, oh, we'll Tall, do, tall, tall Me's 15, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a big year. Yeah, me. how does it feel to be celebrating old. such a massive... Well, no, I bet your really. birthday makes you feel old as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's incredible, really. I mean, uh, to think that we've sort of come from the shed and taken it to the stars really is, is, um, is more than we could have ever dreamt of. Um, but you know, I think what we wanted to do with this anniversary is not turn it into one big retrospective. It, it's about it's an opportunity, a springboard to talk about what we're going to do for the next 15 years. Um, that's the way we viewed it because I think sometimes. Anniversaries can sometimes. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and can mean more to you personally than it does to other people. Yeah, yeah. But we wanted to use this as a way of framing what we're trying to achieve for the next 15 years in much what we're like we're doing here today with the Academy yeah. and finding talent. You know, that's very much, yeah, the platform of, right, that was great, yeah. but this is what we're going to do now. Yeah, yeah. And what are you going to do next? Where do you see it in another 15 years? Um, where do I see it in 15 years? Well, me playing a lot of golf. To be fair, yes. at weekends, yeah, handicap down to at least a, at least four. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, just much of the same. I think what you have to be now is very adaptive yeah. within the, the, the framework of running a record label. We've gone on the kind of traditional uh, context of just releasing music. It's so so multifaceted now, and I think it's important to be adaptive and progressive in the way you look at doing things. That you seize lots of opportunities. I mean. In some senses, it's kind of shrunk in that you know the, the, the point of sale has become smaller. But there's so many other ways you can make money through yeah, yeah. the medium of music now. So it's about being constantly adaptive, you know, within that marketplace and making sure we always fulfil every opportunity. And whatever we do, we do the best of our ability. Yeah, yeah. And what are you doing to celebrate 15 years then? Getting you hammered. Have you got a tour? Well, yeah. Yeah, obviously, no, no, of course not. No, uh, yeah, we got. A uh, big compilation out now, which is 70 tracks from the Tour and family, um, which is something that we wanted to do to, to show that we are unified as a brand. You know, we have a roster of artists, and collectively that says Tour Room. Um, so that was you know, quite different in its approach. You know, we didn't want to go and do here are the big 20 records from the last 15 years. About like this is what we stand for now. No. Stand. This is the gang. This is the crew. Um, and complement that with a 15 date world tour. Um, again, not just doing conventional club shows every time. We wanted to choose interesting spaces and interesting venues in which to do it. Um, for example, we're doing like the Knockdown Centre in, in Brooklyn, like a big outside um, space, it's really cool. Then we're doing a warehouse in LA, um, we're doing a beach party in, in Polka. So we wanted to do different, you know, not just the conventional, we wanted to use this anniversary, sort of bucking the trend of what a traditional anniversary would look like right across the board. Yeah, and um, in regards to releases themselves on the label, how involved are you with them? Just your standard releases that are coming through at the moment, are you always on board A&R instead? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, we are a team here at Tour, and that's the secret of its success. It's not me, far from just me, it's the whole family, it's the whole crew, you know, and collectively it's hard to beat a team, you know, and that's what we've always employed as our, our approach to doing things. And um, yes, the buck stops with, with me in terms of AR directive, but we sit in AR meetings and, and, and it's not a dictatorship, like, right, we're we'll trying this. It's like, right, what, what do we think of this? And everyone brings in different ideas. And then we take a view using all of our collective knowledge right. and experience of putting records out to make a decision. So, yeah, it's myself, Matt, George. We sit, you know, yeah. uh, in A&R meetings on a weekly basis. Um, so, yeah, I'm hands-on involved uh, yeah. all the time, yeah. And not to get too nostalgic, but I did want to ask while I've got you, if you had to sort of cast your mind back over the years, what would be your favourite tour room party and your tour, favourite tour room release? Sure, I think the tour, favourite tour party was definitely Brixton. Yeah. When, we, when we sold out Brixton Academy, I mean, it wasn't really being used as um, a sort of electronic venue. It was very much bands. I think the Swedes had done a show there, right, yeah. and then we were the second the second party there. So it was like a you know, it's a big seismic shift away from you know we were do doing ministry at that point as a residency. So it was a big step up in terms of tickets and, yeah. and going from a, a, a traditional club. Uh, we walk up 
to a hard ticket venue, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it, re it really then became a barometer of, of where the brand stood. So yeah, that was massive, and I, it was it was so enormous. I remember finishing the gig and texting my brother afterwards. Stuart, oh, what have we just done? Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. that's bonkers. You know, we were you know we were in the, literally we were in the shed five years previous. Yeah. Now we're selling out Brixton. Yeah. Um, so that was a, a um, you know, if you had to kind of look back, that was a big moment in the history of Tour Room. Um, in terms of releases, I think one that I'm most proud of, one of my own, I suppose, is Downpipe that yeah. we did with Underworld and Dean. So yeah, that was just the whole process of doing it and, and you know, getting the opportunity to work with guys you'd aspire to for many years. Yeah. It's just super cool.